I'm G from the Cub Scouts. Welcome back to another episode of Phoenix Wright. Thank you all so much for the support on the last episode. I enjoyed reading all the comments, so keep them coming. Leave a like on this video if you want me to finish this entire series. We're about to jump into a trial after two years of me not knowing mostly anything. Let's see how I do right now because who they don't that. Everybody get ready and buckle up. Because here we go. Guard is now in session for the trial of Matt and Guard. Are the prosecution and defense ready? The defense is ready, Your Honor. What? I say, Mr. Wright, what happened to Miss Von Karma? Uh, I don't know, Your Honor. Why are you getting mad at me? Your Honor. Please be quiet, bailiff. Court is in session. If you must tell me something, please keep it brief. Now then, what is it? Prosecutor. Prosecutor Von Karma has. This morning, Miss Von Karma was shot by an... What? She was shot by an unknown gunman? Oh, that's the present that that person said. The gift of ending that lifey. Shot? No freaking way. Bro, just straight up just went boom, 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 boom. Somehow, I think this is the present that man was talking about. That's what I just said, Mia. His present. Miss Von Karma is one of the top prosecutors in the country at the moment. If she were to disappear, it would be to your advantage. I think this guy has mob ties or something. The Mr. And Guard guy? He has people in his back pocket shooting people right in the chest. This, this is totally insane. Miss Von Karma, is she all right? I don't have that answer. She's alive and in stable condition. That's good. Phew. Well, you're, I thought he'd show up. <sighs> no. How are you gonna blindside me with Edgy Baby? Now I can definitely not win this, especially with this man right here with that luscious hair and that ascot and that purple that I love so much. Is that even purple? Your Honor, due to the circumstances, Miss Von Karma cannot appear in court today. You think? I, Miles Edgeworth, will be taking her place. The prosecution is ready, naturally. Wow, I can't believe it. A celebrity in our midst, everybody. And I never use that word. Miss Von Karma was shot in her right shoulder and is currently undergoing surgery. Isn't that her whipping shoulder? It is. You know, she, she, she'll never be able to whip again. Luckily, I have looked this case over and am familiar with the details. The prosecution seeks to prove the guilt of Mr. Matt and Guard. The, the court acknowledges the prosecution. Right. I finally found the answer I was struggling for on my long journey this past year. Don't shake that finger at me. By the time this case comes to an end, you too will know the answer. <laughs> now then, the prosecution would like to call its first witness. Please bring Detective Gumshoe to the witness stand. All right, everybody. I need to massage my temples because this is, might be a fucky wucky or this could be the greatest thing that we have ever seen. Let's do this. Bare facts of the case. This murder happened after the Hero of Heroes Awards ceremony, sir. The victim, Juan Carita, was found dead in his hotel room. After looking into the cause of death, we believe he was definitely murdered, sir. I mean, come on, it's obvious. He was stabbed in the chest with a butter knife. At first, we thought there was something sus about the empty guitar case. However, we later found out that the guitar case had nothing to do with the murder. Are you sure about that? Hmm... After the award ceremony ended, the victim was alone in his room? Yes, sir. Both the victim and defendant went alone to their room, sir. I see. Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. Let's see what we got over here, everybody. So what happens if I press again? Would you please give us a brief timeline of what happened after the ceremony? Oh, yeah, I forgot we could do that. Okay, pal. The ceremony started at 6 p.m. It ended around 8 p.m., and then there was a short break. A special post-ceremony show was supposed to start in the lobby 30 minutes later. And that's when the victim's body was found, correct? Which is to say, the murder occurred during that 30-minute break period. Hmm. Please continue with your testimony, detective. The victim, Juan Carrito, was found dead in his hotel room. Let me press that. The person who discovered the victim's body was Adrian Andrews, correct? Yeah. Who is this Adrian Andrews you're talking about? She's the defendant, Madden Guard's manager. She's a really pretty lady, sir. 
Ah, so she's a pretty lady. I wonder if she will grace us with her presence. When the post ceremony show was about to start, she went to get Mr. Engard. After visiting his room, she next went to the victim's room to get him for the show, sir. I see. And that's when she found the victim's body. After looking into the cause of death, we believe he was definitely murdered, sir. The cause of death, wasn't that because Mr. Karita was stabbed in the chest? Only a careless amateur would believe something so brainless as that, pal. Take a good hard look at the crime photo. Now, real pro's attention would be drawn here to this bandana. Mmm, banana. Um, his bandana, sir. That's the thing wrapped tightly around his necks. Really? Ah, yes, yes, I see. His banana-scented bandana. Then, what about the knife? It seems to have been stuck in the victim's chest on purpose after his death. Hmm, we have a crafty murderer on our hands here. Autopsy report added to the court record. So, strangled with a scarf, then stabbed with a knife. Okay. At first, we thought there was something suspicious about the empty guitar case. But... And why did you think that? Because it was empty, pal! The jammin' ninja doesn't go anywhere without his bright red guitar. And we couldn't find it anywhere at the scene of the crime. Oh, then how about this theory? A fan really wanted the guitar and did the crime to get it. How's that? Um, we thought of that too. But... The only fingerprints on the guitar case were the victims. Only the victims, huh? Hmm, I see. Uh, so much for my theory then. Guitar case updated in the court record. Empty. There is some water, but only on the top of the lid. Bears Karita's fingerprints. However, we later found out that the guitar case had nothing to do with the murder. That's true, right? What convinced you it had nothing to do with the case? The guitar wasn't at the Gatewater Hotel that night. Well then, where was it? The bright red guitar was eventually found at the TV studio. The victim, Juan Carita, had apparently only taken the case with him, sir. But why would he do that? So you mean he forgot to put the guitar inside the case? Yes, sir. Even when he was on stage for the ceremony, he didn't have his guitar. So that guitar case was empty even before he got to the hotel. Yeah, that's right. So it really had nothing to do with the case after all. Hmm. I believe that is enough. First, the victim was choked to death with his bandana. Then, after the victim was dead, the killer deliberately stabbed him with a knife. Hmm. Which brings me to my next point. Why then did the police arrest Matt and Guard? Because there was reason enough to suspect him. Here it comes. Looks like Edgeworth's back in full swing. Very well, Detective Gumshoe, please testify about this matter. Okay, so we didn't have to actually object to anything. We just had to learn more info. Matt and Guard and Juan Carrito were huge rivals with each other. They each thought the other guy was in his way. That's motive enough in my book. As for evidence, there's the Jammin' Ninja's button. It was ripped off of the ninja's costume and was found in Mr. Engard's Hakama. The defendant bought the knife for the crime, which makes this a premeditated murder. Hold on. I think I know what to do with that one. Hmm, so the defendant's fingerprints were found on the knife used in the stabbing. It was sort of sticky on the handle, so the fingerprints came out pretty clearly, sir. Knife added to the court record. Bears the victim's blood and Engard's fingerprints in the grip. Gatewater is engraved. And there's this button. That was found in the defendant's clothes, was it? Hmm. And is this button also covered in blood? Yes, and we know that the blood on it is the victim's blood, sir. What? Jammin Ninja's button added to the court record was ripped from the costume, is covered in Karita's blood, found in Engard's Hakama. All of this points very clearly to the defendant, doesn't it? Yes, it most certainly does, Your Honor. Ready to give in yet, right? Huh. I'll find the hole in your argument somehow. You can press as hard as you'd like. Just hurry up with your usual pointless questions. <sighs> Alright. I think I know what to do. As for evidence, there's the Jam and Ninja's button. Let's talk about that button one time. Do you have any proof that the button belonged to the victim? Huh? What do you mean, pal? Oh, um, let me put it this way. I'm asking you if you have any evidence to back up your claim that 
This button was ripped off of the Jammin Ninja's costume. Huh? But can't you tell by just looking at it? And the victim's blood is on it. Anyone could have smeared that blood on there afterward. M Mr. Edgeworth, help me, sir! Alright, I knew it had to be this piece of evidence. Now to reel this one in. Thread. Huh? The button was attached to the costume by thread, obviously. And that thread snapped when the button was torn off. If you match up the ends of the thread on the costume with the thread on the button, it's a perfect match. Yeah, that's it! They're a perfect match, pal! Ugh. That's Edgeworth for you. Never misses a beat. It was ripped off of the ninja's costume and was found in Mr. Engard's Hakama. When was this button found? Pretty soon after the body was found, we rounded up everyone who knew Mr. Kurita. And then we did a search on them all. That's when we found the button. Hmm, so it was almost immediately after the murder. The police didn't have the free time to lollygag and play tricks unlike some people. Hey, what is he trying to say about me here? What if he's not even talking about you? Not everything is about you, Phoenix. The defendant's fingerprints were also all over the knife. Yeah, because he was eating steak that night. A filet mignon, baby. How were the fingerprints arranged on the knife? Huh? What do you mean, pal? By examining the fingerprints, you can determine how the defendant held the knife. For example, did he hold it normally or overhand? Oh, is that what you meant? Well, we didn't actually think of that. I can't believe the bumbling of this department. Hopeless. Were you paying attention to the testimony rights? The defendant's fingerprints were all over the knife. There is no way to determine how the knife was held at the moment of the murder. Hmm, so is the defendant the owner of this knife then? The defendant bought the knife for the crime, which makes this a premeditated murder. He didn't buy the knife for the crime. Check this out. Hold on. Where is that photo of the thing with the knife? Hold on. Map of the Gatewater Hotel? No, where's that knife? Bears the victim's blood. Let me present this. Objection! Did I do it? Tell me I did it. Wait a second. I did it. I'm like that! I'm him with thee! What? So the basis of your argument that this was a premeditated murder is simply that my client bought a knife beforehand? That's right, pal. The defendant did not buy this knife. Huh? Take a good look at the handle of this knife, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Huh? It has a Gatewater seal set into the handle. Gatewater? I think I've heard that name somewhere before. That's the name of the hotel. The Gatewater Hotel. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, was right. The murder knife was actually property of the hotel. Which means this murder was not premeditated. Yes, people. It wasn't premeditated. Yes, that is very true. This is a very big... <laughs> what is it, Mr. Edgeworth? I'm sorry, but the defense is simply too careless. What? Don't wag that finger at me. I'm clapping cheeks right now. I think whether the crime was premeditated or not has already been determined. How so? I admit this knife is hotel property. There is no one currently on the police force that is dumb enough not to realize this. But I didn't. Oh. <laughs> the question is... Where did this knife come from? Why is that obvious? It came from the victim, Mr. Karina's room. Sorry, Your Honor, but that is incorrect. The victim ate a last meal before he was murdered. With that being the case, I would like to draw the court's attention to what is on top of the table. Yes, I know. It's a knife on top of the plate. There is a knife and a fork on the table. Yes, I know. It did come from the other room, but it's not what it looks like. Then, where in the world did this knife come from? If it pleases the court, I would like for us to recall the room of the defendant, Mr. Matengard. 
Yes, I know, a missing knife on the plate. Woohoo! Especially what was on top of his table. There is something missing. Perhaps it is a single knife? We investigated the leftover dishes for fingerprints, and while we were investigating, we came to the conclusion that Mr. Madengard's knife was missing. Ugh. Mr. Engard had gone to the victim's room with the knife he had used during dinner. Why would he carry a knife on a visit? To kill, of course! And with that, I believe the prosecution has proven this was a premeditated murder. No, everybody, calm down. He's framed. He's getting framed, but he won't be framed. Amazing, Mr. Edgeworth. Absolutely brilliant. A brilliantly clear deduction. It seems like Edgeworth had this plan from the very beginning. This must be one of those traps, and I just walked headlong into it. A murder weapon with fingerprints and a button from the victim's costume. There is quite a sizable amount of evidence here. I can safely say that any further deliberation is a waste of your honor's time. Although, I wouldn't mind if the defense were to present evidence not yet shown to the court. Evidence not yet shown? He means evidence that the court hasn't seen yet. In other words, new evidence. What does the defense have to say about this, Mr. Wright? Um, well... Phoenix. The judge is favoring the prosecution right now. You think? I know that, Mia! I have eyes and ears! If we answer with something wrong here, that gavel of his will be ringing out to the sound of our defeat, and it'll probably be clapping on my butt cheeks. Mr. Wright, do you have something important and necessary to present to this court? Actually, I do. Not right now. What do I have? Hold on. Hold on. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Hmm. Maybe I don't have anything right now. I'm gonna say, I don't have shit right now, Your Honor! This has to be another trap. Better if I don't say anything than risk throwing out a bad piece of evidence. Looks like the defense isn't saying a peep on this one. Which means this court is adjourned. Phoenix, we will lose this case if you give up here. So you had better show the judge something, quick! Slow down! We all know I have a tendency to be wrong more than... I can't even say it. Hold it. Yeah, hold it! There's one... There is? One piece of evidence that catches my attention. Something that this court has yet to see. Mr. Wright! I will say this one more time. I do not feel this trial needs to continue at all. However, I'm giving you one chance. And only one! What the judge is saying, right, is don't try pulling one of your usual bluffs here. If I mess this up, it's curtains for all of us. Yeah, beef curtains. You may now present one, and only one piece of evidence. Now then, what is this important evidence that you must show to the court? Um, okay. Well, give me, give me one second. Give me one second here, all right? Okay, um, it's gotta be something like this, right? It's gotta be that. Crime photo? It's gotta have something to do with Adrian, right? Because I have nothing else. It's gotta be that. Hold on. It's gotta be one of these. Or, it's gotta be one of these. You know what? I'm gonna present this. Oops. Is it Adrian Andrews? It's not Adrian Andrews. You suck, you jackass. Is it the wine glass? This is a wine glass, is it not? It's the wine glass? It's the wine glass. Please look at the photo of the crime scene one more time. I'm not even going to lie to you all. This took me about four tries. And it's the wine glass. I cannot believe that. The scene is a mess because of the victim's struggle against his assailant. The vase was broken, his makeup is all over the floor. These were all things that at one point sitting on the top of the dresser. Hmm, well yes, I see your point. However, this glass that is sitting on top of the dresser is mysteriously untouched. The only thing that I had not fallen over along with everything else is this wine glass. This piece of evidence is more than strange enough to warrant further consideration! Yeah, give me those dots. Well, what do you all have to say? 
Ah, uh, well, yes. It is a little peculiar. Yes, isn't it? I thought it was. You can stop looking at me with those puppy dog eyes of yours now. Mr. Edgeworth? What is it, Your Honor? Your opinion? You don't need my opinion. Because there is no special meaning to that glass for that ass. What? It's safe to say that the glass was set there after the crime took place. By the person who discovered the body, Adrian Andrews, for example. She could have easily been so shocked that she set the glass down without thinking. Hmm, that does sound very plausible, Mr. Wright. Could Miss Andrews really have set that glass down without thinking? It's possible. There's no way. Could she have set it down without thinking, though? Let's see. Um, no. Because I feel like that tomato juice was there the whole time. Right? There's no way. If I appear weak here, the trial is over. I can look for my proof later. For now, I should trust my instinct and point with certainty. They just might fall for it if you're thought-provoking enough. The defense would like to challenge the prosecution's theory. We would like to see something that proves it was Miss Andrews who set the cup on the table. Hmm, you've turned the situation on its head yet again, as usual. Mr. Edgeworth, do you have any proof to back up your claim? There's no way he has any. He's just bluffing. Unlike Mr. Wright, I never say anything unless I have the evidence to support it. What? Oh boy. You're not thinking hard enough today, right? Did you think this wine glass escaped my notice? Then... Of course it has been thoroughly inspected for fingerprints. Fingerprints? There were only one set of fingerprints left on this wine glass. Only one? Well, whose were they? They were not the victims nor the defendants. Rather, they were one of Adrian Andrews. What? Wine glass updated in the court record. Found next to the victim, it's filled with tomato juice, bears Andrew's fingerprints. That is why I said that the person who had discovered the body had left it there. Are we done here, Mr. Wright? Ugh, I can't believe I fell into another trap. Miss Andrews was probably holding the glass when she went to see Mr. Corita. But upon seeing his dead body, she was stunned and set the glass down on the dresser. Hmm, what you just said makes a lot of sense. Tisk, tisk, tisk. Now do you see right? You can't change any part of my scenario as it explains everything all too well. Ugh. I've thought long and hard this past year about what it means to be a prosecutor. And from here on out, I will show you the answer I have come to discover. Wait a second, Mr. Edgeworth. I think the prosecution has provided enough evidence for me to enter my verdict. Unfortunately, I cannot allow you to pass judgment yet. The prosecution has yet another witness we would like the court to hear from. Another witness? Yes. Bailiff! Please bring in the next witness. What in the world is Mr. Edgeworth thinking? I have no idea. He's already killing me, but he wants to kill me even harder. And here we go. The freaking old hag. Now then, witness. Please state your name and occupation. Witness! Your name and occupation! Not the rat ta 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 tats Heh! <laughs> gotcha! Ah! I wonder what happened to that calm composure he had earlier. Oh, edgy boy! It's been, what, a year since we last met, hasn't it? You should be more happy to see me! I saw the report with her testimony, but who knew that under that helmet... It was the Wicked Witch of the Witness Stand! I tell you, this time I know what I'm supposed to do! So today, I'm gonna tell you anything and everything! Even things that don't have to do with that terrible crime! Miss Witness, that terrible crime is all the court needs to know! Oh, shush! I'm talking to my dear Edgy Wedgie right now! Don't interrupt us, Gramps! Yes, madam! No, 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 please, by all means, interrupt her, please! Ahem. Anyway, witness, your testimony, please. It's true what they say, that youth are hot-headed nowadays. Not that I mind at all, edgy. Now then, what should I start with? 
The witness was on security detail at the hotel on the night of the murder. Is this correct, Miss Oldbag? It was an honor. Able to see my dearie Juan. It was almost too much for my little heart to handle. You mean, you are a fan of the victim? And you also have a heart? Look, everyone is crazy over that in guard saying he's cute in a fresh way or something. But not me. I wouldn't say anything so silly. After all, I have no interest in a little child like him. I'm only interested in a real man, Juan Carita. Um, but those two were the same age. Anyway, as I was saying, I was pacing in front of his room that night. Very well. Please tell the court what you witnessed the night of the murder. Leave it to me, Edgy Poo. I forgot that she was super in love with him. I'm kind of jelly beans. Witness testimony, what you witnessed. Anyway, after the ceremony, I went to pace around in the hallway in front of his room. There was something I was interested in finding out, you know. Well, since I was on the job, I made sure to keep a good eye out the whole time. That's when someone showed up. It was the man coming out of poor Juan's room. It was in guard. Mad in guard. He was trying to sneak his way out of Juan's room. Huh. So Mr. En guard came out from the victim's room. See, it has to be him. He's the murderer. I see. Well, Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. KJ, come on. Let's do this. Anyway, after the ceremony, I went to pace around in the hallway in front of his room. Miss Oldbag, what was your post on that night? The lobby. I was supposed to help set up the stage for that trifling show. It was for that lead-headed samurai show. Heh. <laughs> I even took out a few of the nails. Maybe it was a good thing the show didn't go on. Besides, that manager with the glasses seemed to be working hard at it without me. So I thought I'd take a break and spread my wings a little. And that's when you went to hang around the victim's door? There was something I was interested in finding out, you know. What was that something interesting? Something you were interested in? And what was that? It's not some little thing I can just go around telling everyone, you know. It's top secret between me and Juan. Ah, uh, an edgy poo, of course. Mr. Edgeworth, what is this thing she was interested in? I have no idea. I despise gossip, Your Honor. Gossip? But should it prove relevant, we can always have it appended to her testimony later. It looks like we shouldn't force it right now. Hmm. And did the witness stay in the vicinity of the victim's door the entire time? I don't know. That's what I'm about to find out. Well, since I was on the job, I made sure to keep a good eye out the whole time. Did ya? Oh? Then would you tell us the number of people who went in and out of Mr. Corita's room? I have no idea! I wasn't born so I could count things for those who didn't pay attention in class. That's why ever since I turned 20, I quit keeping track of how old I really am. Yes, well, that would explain why your age was not included in the report. In any case, the witness then saw someone, correct? That's when someone showed up. It was a man coming out of Mr. Poor Wan's room. Who in the world was that? I'm not allowed to say. This sort of info has to be carefully guarded from the masses, Sonny. The man that came out of Juan's room. It. Was. He. Was. Yes. He was. Ah, I'm too scared. I can't say his name out loud. Oh, what I wouldn't give to have Francisca's whip right about now. Well, I guess I can tell you, since he was such a bad boy anyway. Who was it? It was in guard, man in guard, duh. Okay, but how do you know for sure? You saw my client? Are you sure about that? Yesy. Really? Annoying brat, when I say I saw someone, I saw that person. Why do I get a sense of deja vu? Maybe to avoid a repeat of last year, I should delve into this a little bit further. The person's face, what the person was carrying, the person's clothes, the person's face. What was the person wearing? Please tell the court about the man's clothes in more detail. What a troublesome man you are, really, as if something like that matters. But it does. Um, now what was it? Oh yes, it was that thing. What thing? That gaudy thing he's always wearing, that racing jacket. Ah, oh, he was wearing that at the detention center too. That thing's meant for nothing but seducing women out of their pantaloons. Huh, <sighs> men. Um, right. 
So, Mr. Wright, was this testimony just now important or relevant in any way? Um, it was not important. It was very important. It was so important, I want to ask more. Of course it was important, Your Honor. Objection. Then perhaps you would like to point out what part of that testimony was important? Don't you see it, Edgeworth? Your Honor, I request that what the witness said about the jacket be appended to her testimony. Huh, I don't quite see where you're going with this, but all right, witness, please. Uh, well, I don't like to badmouth anyone without reason, but if I must... He was wearing his flashy racing jacket. Honestly, it's all just for show. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's see. Let's see. A glossy photo of Maya. Seems like the Nickel Samurai is to confess something after the post-ceremony show. Nickel Samurai. Hold on. Give me something. That is... He's the Jammin' Ninja, right? Oh, wait! Was ripped from his costume. Is covered in Karita's blood. Found in Engard's Hakama. Objection! Yes! I am like that. Miss Oldbag. What? Don't say my name for no reason. Do you know what this is? Ah! It's button number two on the Gem and Ninja's costume. Now I know she's an obsessed fan. She identified it in a single glance. Give it here! Give it here! If you don't give it to me, I'll punish you with this. Yeah, thank you for that. That's like a back massager, baby. Wow, she really is a diehard fan to want a button covered in blood. This button was discovered on Mr. Engard's body during a full body search. See? See? This button proves beyond a shadow of a doubt it was the rascal Engard. It was caught up in the pleats of his Nickel Samurai Hakama pants. See? See? And Engard is the Nickel Samurai. Witness! Now, it may just be me, and I do have an active imagination. But just now, didn't you say that the defendant, Madden Guard, was wearing his usual racing jacket? Yeah, that's what I freaking thought, you old hag! Ah, uh, I'm so sorry. Sorry that you judge people based on what they wear! If I wore the trendiest clothes... Oh, okay, yeah, she's just gonna keep doing this, do a little bit of that. We got him, everybody. We put her in check. Now hold your tongue still there for one second. So what you saw in actuality was not Mr. Engard, the man. No. But Mr. Engard, the nickel samurai? But when you think about it... Yeah, think about it, everybody. Think about it, people. They're really one and the same anyway. Miss Old Bag, this is a very important point we're talking about. Edgy Poo, do you think so too? Well, it might be something worth considering. Just say it's important and agree with me for a change. Witness, think carefully and try to remember as much as you can before you testify. <sighs> All right, if you insist. I should be the one sighing, not you. That was good, everybody. I can't believe I got that first try. I was like, okay, if he's wearing these clothes, then how is that button going to be in his uh, comma? In guard. In guard. Yes, now I remember. The nickel samurai. That's right. It was the nickel samurai that I saw. Yes, it would have been convenient for him to wear his costume during the murder. He had to go to that post-ceremony stage show right after the crime, you know. So he must have worn that nickel samurai costume when he was stabbing poor Juan. Of course, right? Because the stabs are much better when you're doing it in that costume. I knew it. I knew you'd say he was inside that costume. What? Did you think there could have been someone else inside that costume? Don't be a bad little boy thinking such rude things. But, but the possibility does exist. Ah, youngins today. I told you there is no way it was anyone else. How do you know that? Because I said so. And what I say is the truth. At least she's just as delightful a witness as she was a year ago. Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Do I have to, though? She is so freaking annoying. But here we go. Let's one-take Jay this again. In guard, in guard. Yes, now I remember. The Nickel Samurai, that's right. It was the Nickel Samurai that I saw. Yes, it would have been convenient for him to wear the costume during the murder. How do you know, though? And why would that be? That way, no one could see his face, of course. But there's still no advantage for him that I can see. 
In fact, you would think the costume would make him stand out all the more. You are such an annoying child, you know that? You disagree with everything I say because you're always wrong. Isn't that what you're always doing to me? I got it! Maybe it was more troublesome for him to change in and out of his costume. He had to go to that post-ceremony stage show right after the crime, you know. Was there anyone else scheduled to appear at the post-ceremony show? Well, all the contestants were supposed to go on stage in a friendly gesture thing. And that included the gem and ninja. Of course it included him. That's why when Engard came out of Dear Wan's room, I didn't give it a second thought. Hmm, I see. Well, anyway... So he must have worn that nickel samurai costume when he was stabbing poor Juan. I feel like I have to press that one. I think I have to make some evidence against that. So let me ask you one last time. The person you saw, it really was the nickel samurai? As showy as ever. Haven't I been saying that from the very beginning? Can I throw in the towel yet? Hmm. You don't need to think too hard on this one. Huh? There's a contradiction in her testimony and it's sitting in plain sight. The question is what that contradiction means for us. Well, I have to figure out what you're talking about first, but okay. In guard and guard. Yes, now I remember. The Nickel Samurai. That's right. It was the Nickel Samurai that I saw. Yes, it would have been convenient for him to wear his costume during the murder. He had to go to that post-ceremony stage show right after the crime, you know. So he must have worn that Nickel Samurai costume when he was stabbing poor Juan. But how would he have the knife... If he didn't go to his room first, or did he go to his room first? Bears the victim's blood in Engard's fingerprints. In the grip, gate water is engraved. So he must have worn that nickel samurai costume when he was stabbing poor Juan. But if he went in the room right away, he wouldn't have had the knife, right? So, OBJECTION! Give me some. Give me my flowers. PLEASE TAKE A LOOK AT THIS! Yeah? So it's a knife, big deal. If you're trying to scare me with that, I'll have you know it won't work. No, no, that's not my intention at all. That's the knife that was used in the murder, correct? Your Honor, do you know why this piece of evidence is important to this case? You don't even have to ask. It's because the defendant's fingerprints are on it. Is that what you're driving at? That is exactly what I'm driving at. What are we driving at? And whose car are we driving? If Mr. Engard was really in the Nickel Samurai costume at the time of the murder that it's impossible for his fingerprints to have been left on this knife. Actually, he would have wiped all previous fingerprints on the knife right off. Exactly. So he was actually in his room, and somebody else grabbed that knife after Mr. Engard left the room. So if Mr. Engard was actually the one doing the stabby stabbies, then that means his fingerprints would have been wiped off because the costume had gloves on. So that means somebody grabbed the knife after Mr. Karita was killed, Put the knife inside of his right shoulder, I think. And boom. Frame city. Oh, that's right. The Nickel Samurai wears gloves, doesn't he? He probably took his gloves off before he began the stabbing. And why would he do something like that? To leave his prints on the murder weapon? There is no way he would do something like that! However, there is one possibility. Then let's hear your possibility. It's very simple. The defendant went to the victim's room while in costume as the Nickel Samurai. At the time, the defendant held no intent to murder. He was probably just going to relax and talk with the victim about the stage show. Which is why he took his gloves off. Hmm, but the murder still did take place. It's well known that there was bad blood between the defendant and the victim. Hmm, yes, I have heard that before. Well, Mr. Wright, what do you have to say about Mr. Edgeworth's theory? So let me get this straight. Edgeworth's theory goes like this. When the defendant went to the victim's room, he had no intention of killing him. Now, up to this point, are there any problems with his theory? There are no problems. There is a contradiction. Think about it one more time. There are no problems. Ugh, I can't see any real problems with this theory. But if you let Edgeworth's theory stand, then we're one large step closer to a guilty verdict. Look at the court record again and take another shot at it. Yeah, I just have to think about it one more time. Mr. Wright, please make your decision soon. Okay, so we have to click that there is a contradiction. My head hurts, but I'm pretty sure it's the knife. This knife. This was used by Mr. Engard at dinner. Yes, we did establish that. Which means that if my client was in fact the killer, then he brought this knife with him when he went to visit Mr. Karita. Exactly. 
I suppose. However, you just said it yourself. At that time, the defendant held no intent to murder. If that were true, then why would he bring a knife? He wouldn't, would he? Hmm. Which means, Mr. Edgeworth, your theory was flawed from supposition one. Yes, people talk about how great I am. And one more thing. If the murderer was wearing the costume at the time of the murder, then there should be a glove mark left on the knife. Which means the defendant's fingerprints shouldn't be all over it like bees on a hive. And that brings me to my final point. This knife was planted by the real killer to hide their identity and mislead us! Yes, to mislead us! Order! Order, I say! Order in the court! Was this knife really planted by the killer? Why would the murderer do such a thing? To hide the murder method, to frame Matt and guard. To hide the murder method? Oh, to, I mean, to frame Matt and guard, of course. It's to frame my client, Mr. and guard, of course. To frame? Objection. Don't object that, it's the fact. Aren't you forcing the interpretation just a little too hard on this one? Objection. But we just established that the witness saw the Nickel Samurai in costume. And if that were true, then there shouldn't be a single fingerprint on this knife. Uh. Witness! Looks like I've made your life a tiny bit more difficult, huh, Edgy Poo? Uh. Witness, did you or did you not really see the Nickel Samurai? Well, I guess at first I might have forgotten, but... Are you saying you mixed up Mr. Engard with the Nickel Samurai, his character on TV? But I mean, I can't really do anything about that now. Look, I was waiting around in front of their doors because, well... Well, I wasn't waiting around for the Nickel Samurai, that's for sure. She wasn't waiting for the Nickel Samurai. All right, then. Who were you waiting around for, then? I know who she was waiting for. That's top secret anyone outside of the security. She was waiting for the girl, Adrian Andrews. I have a feeling that you were waiting for Mr. Juan Carita. Am I correct, witness? Ha ha ha. The way you think you are a sad amateur with terrible case of nearsightedness. Doesn't she love the gossip? Doesn't she eat that shit up? Amateur? Me? What am I an amateur of? So Old Bag was waiting around in front of the victim's room. But it doesn't sound like she was waiting to catch a glimpse of Mr. Carita. Maybe Phoenix. Maybe the old bag was waiting around for that person. Huh. Give it to who I think Mia's hinting at. It's certainly possible. Miss Old Bag. You were waiting for this person to come out of the victim's room, weren't you? Of course she was. Come on. Give me some of this and take that! Who is this person? This is Adrian Andrews, Mr. and Guard's manager. But why would the defendant's manager be in the victim's room? It seems that this is the latest rumor in circulation, Your Honor. Hmm. Oh, this is, well, this is, hmm, oh, I see. The judge seems to be really into the article, if it can be called such a thing. Then this manager with the initials AA, are you saying it's... Adrian Andrews. Without a doubt, the witness thought so as well. Huh. Looks like you found me out. Well, that's fine. I can throw away this whole sworn to confidentiality stuff then. Witness, what in the world are you? Watch out, Phoenix. I've got a bad feeling about this. A very bad feeling. I got some information, some very secret information from a certain source. So that's why I was doing my own little investigation. In secret, of course. But what for? Oh, just for myself. Personal reasons and all that. Well, Mr. Edgeworth, how will you proceed from here? I really don't want to do this. However, I simply cannot let this point slide. I see. Very well, then. Witness, please testify about this secret information. Get ready. This is going to take the wind out of you youngins. I'm sure we're all capable of handling this. Really, it's not like we're 10 years old. That end guard is one evil, evil man. He thought he could ruin poor Juan by causing a huge scandal. So to do that, he sent his own manager to get in close with Juan. I cannot condone such dirty tricks, so I took action. Oh, and this is top secret. You got that? Nobody else but you and me know yet, okay? The defendant sent his manager? 
What a distasteful topic for this court. What? Nobody's above gossip. And isn't there a saying? The truth is never pleasant? Never heard that one before. Mr. Edgeworth, what about this Adrian Andrews person? We have looked into this matter and found that the truth the article proposes is, in fact, baseless gossip. Hmm, but should this be true? Then this proves that the defendant did bear ill will towards the victim. So this means I have to smash this rumor once and for all. Now then, Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Be careful, the old bag seems rather excited right now. That's right, and guard is nothing but your average foul-blooded youth! Well, as the old saying goes, you've got to burn old bags with fire. Time to fire up the afterburners and hit the highway to the danger zone. Okay, Phoenix, with the quotes, with the quotes I've never heard of before. All right, let's cross-examine that ass. And not in that way, you sickos. That end guard is one evil, evil man. He thought he could ruin poor Juan by causing a huge scandal. A scandal? What do you mean by that? You're a dim-witted one, aren't you? I can't believe you don't know what a scandal is. Honestly, what are they teaching kids in middle school these days? I wasn't asking what the word scandal means. Even I know that much. Well, that end guard thought he could own a monopoly on popularity. So to do that, he sent his own manager to get in close with Juan. You don't have any proof that Mr. Engard did any such thing? You must be suffering from shock, the shock of hearing the truth. And now, since you're in so much shock, you can't do anything right. You're right, I can't do anything, but boy do I wish I could do something about you. Alright then, Sonny, show me what you've got. Can you show me proof that Engard didn't bear any ill will towards Juan? Present evidence, decline the offer to present. Well, I can't do that, obviously, I don't think. I don't have anything to offer. See, just as I thought. And you were lecturing me about saying things without proof. You've just given me a free pass to say whatever I want whenever I want, silly boy. Me and my big mouth. That's the way the cookie crumbles, for you anyway. I cannot condone such dirty tricks, so I took action. Oh, and this is top secret. You got that? Nobody else but you and me know yet, okay? Wait. What? I'm a busy woman. Tea time with the kids is over. Secret information that no one else knows yet. If that's true, then how do you know this secret information? Huh? Well, that's because I'm a pro. Yes, that's it. It's a secret. Even if you drill the hole into my brain, you'll never find out. How in the world did that old bag get such a secret piece of information? Press further, present evidence, wait and see. Let me press that ass further. If you don't be a good girl and tell me where you got this secret information, you won't get to go home today. Um, Edgypoo, what are you doing? Help me. Huh? What do I have to do with this? Just do this for me. You'll get your reward. Huh, I don't want your reward. Well, you don't leave me much of a choice. <laughs> this dude's such a savage. Attention! The witness could have gotten her information from anywhere. It's even possible that it was spontaneously made up inside the witness's head. And he lectures me on reckless blabbering. As long as we don't know where this information came from, it's quite a waste of time to focus on this line of questioning. Where did Old Bag get her inside information? There has to be something I can use to figure that out. Sounds like just another tidbit of gossip, doesn't it? But you can't just ignore it either. It makes your client look bad either way. Well, I don't think I heard anything really out of the ordinary just now. There has to be something we can catch her on. Yeah, and when I find it, I'm gonna press the heck out of it. Okay, I know what I have to do. Because Lada actually is investigating the gossip too. Claims to be an investigative photographer, latest field, the CD world of tabloids. Duh! And we have the tabloid right here, an article from the tabloid Gossip Land. A superstar in an ultra-hot mega-secret love scandal. Yeah. And then we have Lada's camera. Stolen on the night of the murder. Tabloid article about the victim was in the case. So the tabloid article was in the case of this camera. And it was stolen on the night of the murder because Lada was actually trying to get the gossip from Adrian and Juan, right? Okay. I know what to do. So, where's the one... Nobody knows but me, right? Okay, so let's press that. 
And then let's present some evidence. So no one else is supposed to know this secret information, correct? If that's true, then why do you know it, Miss Old Bag? Why are you looking at me like that? Stop that. You know what? I think she stole the camera. Witness! I hate to say it, but this is how you came to acquire your secret info, isn't it? She's the one who stole the camera, so take that! The investigative photographer, lot of heart. Oh yes, I remember that mischievous girl. She reported that she had lost a certain note she had written to herself. She reported such a thing? On that piece of paper, she had written down some of her outra uh, impressions about the relationship between the victim and Miss Andrews. What? Outrageous ideas, you say? No, no, no. I said impressions. Then, then, then everything written on this piece of paper is completely meaningless? Ah, that's it. That's the note. Ah. Ah! No, you see, this is something completely different. Why would she bring that to the courtroom? She's so stupid. This is my top secret list of groceries to buy. Hmm. Then you are the one who took Miss Hart's note. I'm a huge fan of wands. That's why. That infamous puppy-haired whippersnapper. She's working with that evil Engard. She said so herself. Engard, I'm his sidekick. She was so happy, smiling like a silly duck. I was only checking what she had written. Yeah, nobody believes that bullshit. Edgy boo! You believe me, don't you? Ugh. I was only trying to help out like the angel I am. It's only one little piece of paper. I've never taken anything else before. You really should come with a supply of cheese to match your vintage wine. Well, it was only a piece of paper. I suppose we can overlook this just this once. She looks like she's really sorry. Should I forgive her? Fuck no. Pile on more pressure. If I let up on her now, she'll get away. I have to find some way to inflict a deafening blow to the prosecution. Witness! You said that the only thing you stole was that note. Is this correct? Stole? Why don't you listen more carefully, you annoying brat? I saved this piece of paper from the terrible, lonely trash can, that's all. You're lying, damn it, and I can prove it! Are you putting my credibility under scrutiny again? Miss Old Bag. I don't believe that the note is the only thing you stole that night. Yeah, you stole that camera! Miss Old Bag. That note was with a camera inside its case, wasn't it? A camera? Yesterday, Lotta Hart was raising a huge stink over her camera. She kept saying something like, My sweetie, 1600 cameras disappeared on me. Why? Why? Witness! What is it, Gramps? If you have the note, then it is only logical that you have the camera too. Uh, looks like you found me out again, Sonny. Is this the camera you're looking for? She brought the camera too? Where did she put it inside of her old ass butt cheeks? Uh, that's... What? Even though I look like this, I'm still a person, you know? I still eat meals like you. I fall in love and borrow things from people. Um, I think your definition of borrow is a little off. I saw that woman's business card, and that's when I noticed it said, Slime bag celebrity photographer extraordinaire. Well, when I saw that, I had to know what sort of picture she had taken. I'm a professional security guard. It's my business to know these things. Yeah, it's not her business, people. Don't fall into her trap. Bailiff! Check this camera's photos. Hurry! We must examine them at once! Holy crap, I lost my voice, everybody. I need to massage my throat. Well, Mr. Edgeworth, what do we have? There is only one photo that seems to be relevant to this case. Please present it to the court. Hmm. This is... This is the Nickel Samurai! See, I told you! That's the guy I saw! This proves that the witness was not lying earlier about this matter. Lotta's photo added to the court record. Picture taken in the hallway right after the murder. What does this all mean, Mr. Edgeworth? This photo by itself does not prove that the person in it is the defendant. However, in his own confession, Mr. Engard clearly stated that... At the time of the murder, he was still in his nickel samurai costume. 
if that is the case, then this nickel samurai is... The defendant. Ah, oh, come on, people. Really gullible. How did it come to this? I think this brings us to the end. We have examined every piece of evidence thoroughly. Final comments, Mr. Wright? The court will consider them before we close. Do you agree that this photo is decisive evidence against your client? If this photo really is decisive, then we're done for. But if I raise an objection here and blow it, then I would put Maya's life in jeopardy. I can't make a mistake here. There is only one road out of this mess. This photo that Lada took. There's nothing strange with it. There's something strange with it. Um, let me see. Let me see, let me see, let me see. A glossy photo. That's the Nickel Samurai, right? There's got to be something wrong with it. There's got to be. Like, stop playing with me. Um, I think that there's something wrong with it. Maybe the pants are too long? Yeah, the pants look a little too long because in the photo, you can actually see his feet clearly. But in the other one, it almost seems like that thing is a little too tall for that person. Something strange with it. Let me see if I'm right. There's... There's something strange with this photo. I knew this was coming, right? Your thoughts, Mr. Edgeworth? I think we can all agree there is nothing strange with this photo. There is no way for the defense to debunk this photo, even with a bunker buster. Debunk with a bunker buster? Is that what you're planning to do, Mr. Wright? Um, anyway, please look at the photo one more time. If you really believe you can honestly find something wrong with this photo, then you should only need one chance, correct? Um, well, I have to find something wrong with this photo. I can't let this chance go by. Where in the heck did she take this photo from anyway? It's all out of focus. Why can't she take a good shot, especially when it counts? Now then, let's hear your objection. What about this photo is strange? I only have one freaking chance and i can't even save the freaking game bro okay um can i look at the court records one more time i'm just gonna click on the freaking pants Take that! i would like to direct the court's attention to this one area right here what are you pointing to his ankles if you could see this person's ankles that would be one thing i cannot believe this i was gonna save the freaking game but I saved myself from embarrassment. <sighs> However, you can't. And what does that mean? The costume person in this photo could not have been Mr. Engard because it fits his legs perfectly if it was him. But the person who was wearing it is clearly much shorter because Matt Engard is a taller person and the suit fits him perfectly. I'm just too good. I should stop doing what I do and just be a full-time lawyer. What is the meaning of this? I wonder if you would care to elaborate with actual facts, that is. Let's take a look at the Nickel Samurai's poster. Yeah, look at those toes! Please pay particular attention to the area around the bottom of the Hakama. His... His... His socks! You can see his socks! Exactly. However, in this photo, the Nickel Samurai is clearly holding his Hakana up just to walk. Got him. There is only one explanation for this. The person inside this costume is clearly much shorter than the defendant. Yes, much shorter. Much, much shorter. All right. I think I've turned things around for myself this time. That's curious. Huh? What is? Edgeworth is unusually calm today. That's true. He's just letting the trial run itself as if he's only along for the ride. Along for the ride? What do you mean by that? I can only guess that perhaps he doesn't feel under attack at all. He doesn't feel under attack? Then I haven't damaged his case at all? Mr. Edgeworth, where does this leave us? If the person in this photo is not Matt and Guard, then everything the prosecution has tried to prove has become meaningless. Yes, meaningless people. Hmm, I figured it would come to this. What? Right. I have something I want to ask you. I think you have proven that the person inside this costume is not Madden Guard. In that case, 
Who is this a photo of? Who is the person wearing the Nickel Samurai costume? Don't stress out over this, Phoenix. It's very simple. What you should be focused on is Edgeworth's attitude, don't you think? Yeah, why is he so calm? Mr. Wright, let's hear your thoughts. Who is the person in this photograph? It's gotta be his sidekick, Aaron Andrews, right? Adrian Andrews? If you want to know who that nickel samurai is, it is none other than this woman. And why would you say it must be Miss Andrews? What in the world points you to her? For starters, she's short. And she can freely move in and out of Mr. Engard's room. Finally, she had dinner with Mr. Engard that night. And how does that all add up? It means that it makes it very easy for her to get a certain item. A certain knife with Mr. Engard's fingerprints all over it. The knife that was used as a murder weapon. Why don't you just say what it is you want, right? I have to do this now. This is my last chance to turn things around. The defense moves to indict Miss Adrian Andrews in the murder of Juan Carita. It was Miss Andrews who tried to frame the defendant for the crime. Arda! 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 It looks like this trial has hit a most unexpected development. Mr. Edgeworth. Yes, Your Honor. This court is issuing a subpoena for Miss Adrian Andrews. A verdict cannot be passed without first hearing her testimony. All right, this is it. This is kind of bad for us. Huh? What do you mean? If Adrian Andrews is summoned to the court as a witness, it means that the trial will go on for another day. One more day? Oh! If I don't get a verdict today, then Maya... Now then, we shall set Miss Andrews' testimony for tomorrow. What am I supposed to do? The judge is about to adjourn the court. Wait and see. Raise an objection. Now then. Objection! Please, Your Honor. Continue the trial. You must pass a verdict today. I can't do that. We cannot hear Miss Andrews' testimony if she is not... I abhor wasting such valuable time. Edgeworth? Your Honor, I request that you please continue with today's trial. But we cannot continue due to this unexpected development. Tis, tis. Unexpected development. I think you underestimate me, Your Honor. And what do you mean by that? That Mr. Wright would slave his way to subpoenaing Miss Adrian Andrews is all happening according to plan, even if Wright was a bit slow to catch on. What? I have no idea, people. What is the meaning of your statement, Mr. Edgeworth? Miss Adrian Andrews is currently waiting in the prosecution's lobby. She is the next witness. Everything, everything was planned out in advance by that man. Somehow, I knew there was no way Edgeworth would overlook Miss Andrews. Looks like this battle is far from over. Exactly. Very well. We will call the next witness. However, before we proceed, we shall take a 10-minute recess. Please prepare your witness in that time, Mr. Edgeworth. The court will now take a 10-minute recess. Okay, we will take a 10-minute recess in this game, but a two-year break in real life. I'm kidding, everybody. I'm kidding. We are going to continue with this trial as soon as I can get to it. Make sure to leave a comment if you want to see this episode as soon as possible. But if you enjoyed the first part of this trial and me clapping the prosecution's cheeks, make sure you give this video one big fat like. And tell a friend today that Jay from the Cub Scouts is that dude!